Resident Evil Infinite Darkness is a brand new anime series on Netflix that continues the story of the long-running video game franchise. We had a chance to sit down to the director, Eiichiro Hasumi. Check it out. Anything even remotely hostile gets a headshot. Um, let's just get right into it. I was wondering where Resident Evil Infinite Darkness sits within all of the movies and all of the video games we've had so far. Well, uh, it actually takes place in 2006, um, and uh, that's right before uh, the full CG animation Vendetta, um, and obviously after what happens in Raccoon City to Leon. Raccoon City, no, after no, ano, その間のレオンを描くというところで2006年という設定をやりました。Right, excellent. Um, why did you decide to do this as a mini series and not a feature film? Uh, well, actually, when I uh, participated, it was already determined that this was going to be a four-parter. Um, and according to Capcom's uh, producer, producer on this uh, uh, project as well, Hiroyuki Kobayashi, um, he had overseed um, uh, the creation of three CG uh, Resident Evil films. Um, and he felt that he wanted to try to deliver a Resident Evil stories in a different format. Um, and so we wanted to try doing it in a, in a serial uh, manner where, you know, one uh, episode uh, at a time could uh, uh, could emerge um, and reveal itself, would be, which would be new for Resident Evil. Very cool, very cool. Um, over the years, um, there has been quite this rich backstory built over the many Resident Evil video games and also the films, the animated movies. And I was wondering how you went about making this series accessible for newcomers, or is it just for the fans? Well, obviously, uh, it is a, a long series spanning um, uh, 25 years, uh, which means that um, it, it's always cultivated new fans on its way. So, no, it's not a membership where uh, it's only for the fans of the Resident Evil, um, and it's obviously open to newcomers as well. Um, and I was talking to the producer um, who told me that uh, at the beginning of this journey that he wanted to make it a drama and a more of a suspense thriller um, uh, so that uh, newcomers would be able to uh, access it in an easier fashion um, and that we can cultivate more fans. Okay, um, uh, san I was curious as to, there's so much zombie fiction out there, movies, TV shows, and I was wondering, is it hard to still scare people with it and thrill people with it because so much has been done already. Uh, yes, there. Um, I feel do feel uh, that it's becoming more of a challenge uh, for us. Um, I remember when I first saw Dawn of the Dead by um, Romero when I was a child. I, it, it really surprised me. I was really excited by it. But it's not like I've always followed all the zombie um, creations that um, came after that. So I don't know what people are bored of or what people um, uh, see, uh, feel is new. Um, but uh, so in working on this series, I worked uh, very closely with the crew who who already had experience working on the Resident Evil franchise. Um, and we together uh, came up with um, these zombies um, in this in this uh, series. Yeah, you do. I don't want to spoil anything for anyone, but you do something with rats here that had me just, yeah, it was, I hate rats. And that was, that was properly scary. That was good. Thank you. <laughs> I'm really happy to hear that because uh, to be in a confined small space and um, having these small tiny things uh, attack you, that's a little, you know, it is scary. <laughs> that is my nightmare, yeah. Um, I, I wanted to ask about your experiences as well because um, am I right in thinking this is the first time you are doing anime? And I was curious as to why you decided to take on anime and also why work in 3D CGI as well? 
Uh, well, I was really surprised when they came to me uh, to, with the offer for me to direct, um, but I, I decided to do it because it was going to be something new for me, a big challenge for myself. And another big reason was that it was the Resident Evil franchise uh, with so many fans um, globally. Um, by working on this project, I'd be able to uh, make, perhaps uncover the secrets of why uh, the, this um, Resident Evil uh, franchise has so many dedicated fans. Uh, it, it was certainly um, something... Uh, I, I learned a lot from uh, being part of this project for sure. And and did you and did you uncover any secrets? Did you figure <laughs> out why this show has such a loyal fan base through I've lost count how many video games there are. Well, I feel that, especially working with um, the guys from Capcom, uh, that it's because it, they put uttermost importance um, on the fans. Um, and uh, whether it's a, a, you know, an animation or whether it's the character, um, they're all the same. Um, uh, you know that they're the same characters uh, because they have a, a, a canon, um, a, a timeline that is absolutely concrete. You know uh, when the characters were doing what at which particular moment in time and who they had um, encountered. Um, and uh, so there are certain sort of rules um, that we stick to, including how the characters are portrayed. So what uh, what that uh, uh, allows us is to uh, is for the fans uh, of the game, when they come into uh, the movies or the show, uh, they recognize Leon as Leon because it's the same character and the same vice versa. Um, what about working with 3D CGI as a director, did you find that changed your process in any way in your approach to making the movie? Mm -hmm. Actually, there wasn't um, that much of a difference, um, especially with the performances. Uh, we used mocap, um, so obviously we had actual actors um, uh, playing the roles. Um, and so in terms of directing them, that was very much close to uh, what I would do in live action. Um, and it's not like we were creating the performances within the computer. Um, and as for how to shoot the other stuff um, within the CGI, um, uh, the, like the camera uh, and how to use that, um, that was... I, I did it in a, in a very uh, style that was close to live action. Um, and again, so I, it was very close to what I, I had always done. I wasn't that conscious of this being um, anime. Very cool. Uh, hey, san you mentioned uh, Romero and, of course, Dawn of the Dead, which is a landmark movie, a zombie movie. Uh, but I was curious, apart from the Capcom games and um, even Dawn of the Dead, did you have any other points of inspiration uh, with regards to this series in particular? Well, obviously, um, I do have a lot of influences from various films that I've watched over the years. Um, but uh, with this show, I was able to, um, uh, you know, it's something that was very rare for um, uh, people who are making live action in Japan to do, which is to um, uh, present the White House or bringing a submarine um, uh, because it was full CGI. Um, and in doing so, because of those things, which have been already um, been in um, films like from Hollywood that I have seen, I'm sure there have been um, some kind of influences there. Very good. Hey, thank you so much for your time. Uh, um, I, I'm glad you mentioned that actually because I was, there's a Kiefer Sutherland TV series called 24, and uh, I was getting those vibes 24 with zombies. It was, yeah, it was a lot of fun. But thank you so much for your time. <laughs> thank you. It starts with fear. That was Eiichiro Hasumi, the director of Resident Evil Infinite Darkness. If you've seen it, sound off in the comments below and let us know what you think of the show. Also, don't forget to check out our other interviews right here on YouTube. Like us, subscribe to us, tell your friends, tell your family. You know what to do.